Elizo Hamba, Elizo Hamba, Elizo Hamba, Lipege Pambele, Maye Elizo Hamba, Elizo Hamba, Elizo Hamba, Lipege Pambele, Elizo Hamba, Elizo Hamba. My Elizoha, the big pambe. Elizoha, 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 the big. I'll show my Elivanke. Elizoha, Elivanke. Elizoha, Elivanke. Elizoha.
Shumayela, Elizohamba, Shumayela, Shumayela, Elizohamba, Shumayela, Shumayela, Elizohamba, Nipe Pambi, Shumayela, Elizohamba, Pange.
hovu kona Yebo ukona Ukona Yebo ukona Gia mete Gia mete manjano Ushile swini lake Watasose ngigutele Gisho no muhambe kotini Lotu silo ufa Kyo shala ginawe Kyo shala ginawe Je bukona Ukona Ucheho wamu ya pila Umshengi wamu ya pila Ushino watangere ngibuyege Amene nibuyege Amene nibutele Kyo hapa nawe Kyo hapa nawe Kyo kubamba nge santa Jiguweze Ekibe nino mfupi Kyo shezi gina awe Yebo, yebo, yebo Jehovah, Ukona, Gintule Majani, Guvaliwe, Gumyama, Mayewa Gumyama, Gingaboni, Gintule Majani, Guvaliwe, Gumya Gangi Gaboni Giambona Efela Buste Tekno Abed Niko Giambona Ebona Rana Stando and some Lilo Giambona Enkena Nabo Uchove Sim Konsayo Ukena Nati Asishi Isto vos ya crela, o tu que na nati, o que na nati, o que na nati, o que na nati. He will never leave you, nor forsake you. He will never leave you, nor forsake you. She will never leave you, nor forsake you. Nothing is too hard, nothing is too hard, nothing is too hard for my God, for my God. Oh my God, mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Sebaot, Jehovah El Shaddai, we worship you, we Ukona, my God, my God, my God, my God, and you stop it, you stop it, when I am on my Kuro na parati wami, kuna lose sweni. Kichim kuro na parati wako, kuna lose sweni. Oh my God, my God. Uche ho ukona, ukona njalo, 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 ukona. Kwe singi skati zwaga langa tageko. Lalela ukona I came to tell you that ukona You might be going through some stuff I just want to tell you that He is working He's turning your situation around 
He's changing your story right now. All you have to do, open up your mouth and begin to thank him. He has done great things already. If I were you, I would open up my mouth and begin to thank him because he has done he has done it he has done it he has done it he has done it it is finished 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 it is done in the name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty my god my god my god my god my god my god open doors open doors Open doors, open doors, open doors. Somebody begin to celebrate them right now. If you see your victory right now, begin, begin to thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Let everything that has breath praise him, praise him. His word. to the wonderful name of Jesus. Glory to the wonderful name of Jesus. There's so much power in this name. At the mention of your name, demons tremble at the sound of your name. Father, we bless you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Siabonga. Sibongu kona. Yeah. yeah. Put your hands together for Jesus. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. You can surely do better than that. I'm talking about the King of Kings here. I'm not talking about your pastor, but I'm talking about the King of Kings. I'm talking about somebody who wake you up this morning. I'm talking about somebody who gives you strength. I'm talking about somebody, who, oh my God, somebody open up your mouth. Somebody open up your mouth and begin to thank him. You are too cute right now. You are too cute right now. Open up your mouth, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth, open up your mouth. Surely there's something that you can thank him for. Open up your mouth, somebody. Begin to thank him, begin to thank him. He is worthy. Oh, oh my God. Yes, the world. Will bow down and say, you are God. Yes, the world will bow down and say, You are God. Yes, the world will bow down and say, You are God. And every man will bow down and say, You are king. Yes, you are. So let's start. Let us start right now. Why would, why would we wait? We can pray. You now in victory. Let us start right now. Why would why would we wait? We can pray. You now in victory. Yes, the world will 
we want to hear from you. We longing for you. We desperate for you. We are here because we love you. We are here because we need you. We need you, Lord. We need you. We need you. We need you. Oh, yes, I do. I need you right now. God, I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. My soul is thirsty for you. Come and quench our thirst, Jesus. Come and restore us. Come and heal us. Come and transform us. We want to be with you. We want to be where you are. We want to be with you. We will not let you go until, until, until you bless us. Bless us. Bless us. Bless us, Jesus. Oh. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. Nakiboma, vamos a ser ruli la di Oh, thank you, Jesus. 
Tuhan Siema Bahasa Koro Jerusalem Emucha Emucha Binaza Bona
Come on, take it from there. That is what is going to happen when the church when the church is raptured. The in us. We are going to look different. We are not going to look the same way we looked before. In Gobosetu Zabezi Kwebesela in Kasmulu. Zikwebesela si tansi we si kesi we kasilemban. I kasiniga chesu zebeleti glory. That is different from the glory that you are used to. That is what is going to happen when the Son of Man appears to come and gather his church to himself. We have come so that we may be prepared for the soon coming king. We are here. I'm here to execute my assignment and my mandate to prepare the body of Christ and to prepare you for the soon coming king. And we need to be prepared. I want us to take our Bibles and declare this morning before we go to the word of the Lord. Ageuti, my father, this is your word. You and your word are one. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over my mind. Into your hands I commit my soul. I commit my mind. So when you speak, I can hear. When you lovingly confront, I am convicted. When you lovingly correct me, I repent. My mind is alert to your word. My body is responsive to your word. My will is submitted to your word. My attitude is aligned to your word. I willingly place myself under the microscope of your word. Lord, I pray, give me the spirit of understanding. To understand kingdom mysteries in the name of Jesus so that when you speak I can discern your will help me Holy Spirit at this hour to discern the will of God I receive your word with the meekness of my heart speak O oh God I am listening. Let your will be done in my life as it is done in heaven. Let your word shine in my heart. Let your word come like a light into darkness. I receive your word. Change me by the power of your word. 
Lord, I am prepared to open my heart to your word. Speak to me. I am listening, oh God. Prepare me for my soon coming king so I may be ready to meet my master in the air. Thank you, Lord. Let your words shine through. In Jesus' name, it shall be so and never otherwise in the name of Jesus. And let the church say, Amen. You may take your seats in the presence of God. Thank you, worship team. It's long Sami. The title of my message The coming of Jesus Christ is imminent The coming of Jesus Christ is imminent Jesus Christ is coming back he is coming back because he personally made the promise himself. He personally made the promise himself. What in Yabuya? And let's go to the word of the Lord as we begin this journey. The book of Revelation 22, verse number 12 and verse number 13. If you can, just watch your screen. Because all the verses will appear on your screen. The coming of Jesus Christ is imminent. Jesus is coming back again because he personally made the promise. He personally made the promise. The coming of Jesus Christ was prophesied by a lot of prophecies in the Bible and by the prophets. But he said it himself. She made this promise. I will come back again. Let's read verse number 12. If you can, please read. And behold, I am coming quickly. Stop right there. That phrase, I am coming quickly, speak to the imminency or the immediacy of his coming. He's not just coming, but he's coming quickly. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. Verse number 13. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. That is no other but Jesus Christ. The warning is, I am coming quickly. So I am here, church, to blow a prophetic signal. The Bible says we must be like the sons of Issachar and understand the times and the seasons. We need to understand the prophetic calendar of God. We need to understand the prophetic agenda of God. We need to understand the times in which we live as believers. Jesus is coming back quickly. That's what he said. Quickly. That's what he said. Quickly. That's what he said. Now to recap from what I taught last week, the first threefold purpose of his coming why he came. The comings of Jesus can be categorized into three. Threefold purpose why Jesus came. Number one, the first coming of Jesus is called his first coming. When he came the first time, the purpose, he came to pay the bride price for his bride. The Bible says we are the bride of Jesus. He is our groom. So, That's the first purpose of his coming. 
to pay the bright price for his bride. When we read the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 45, please don't try to look at your Bible because time is short. Time is too limited. Look at your screen and just take notes. Mark chapter, four, chapter 10, verse 45, the Bible says, if it appears on your screen, if you can read, please read it. One, two, three, let's read. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. To give his life a, one more time, to give his life a ransom for many. That's the reason why Jesus came the first time. He came to give his life a ransom. He came to pay a ransom using his blood. A ransom is a price that is paid for the release of the slaves. So through his death on the cross and through the spilling of his blood, but a the bright price, a patala the ransom, so that the slaves that were in captivity could be set free from enslavement. When Jesus died on the cross, through his blood, he paid the ransom. When someone kidnaps you, or when someone gets kidnapped, a ransom is the price that is paid to release the one that has been given to slavery. So Mina and I were, we were given to slavery, but when Jesus died on the cross, that blood was a ransom. What is the ransom? It was a payment so that you and I can be set free from enslavement of sin. But it was also the bride price. We must finish the course again. First John chapter 3, verse 8. If it appears on the screen, please read with me. One, two, three, let's read. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. What to do? That he might destroy the works of the devil. Another reason why Jesus came the first time, it was not only to pay the bright price. It was not only to pay the ransom for our sins. But Jesus also came to destroy the works of Satan. Jesus came to undo what the devil did. That's period. He came to undo what the devil did. There are three things that Jesus released us from. One, he released us from the power of sin. Two, he released us from the power of death. Three, he released us from the power of the flesh. He came to undo what the devil did. That is the purpose of his coming, first coming. If you don't understand why he came, you will never anticipate his coming again. When Jesus came the first time, none of us was here. But he came the first time in the flesh. He came in the flesh. Why in the flesh? We may be called the bride of Christ in the spirit, but we are in the flesh, but not of the flesh. So he had to be like us to get married to us. John 10 verse 10 tells us another reason why he came, the first coming of Jesus. If you can, read with me. One, two, three, read. I have come that you may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Jesus came so that we will experience the best life. He came to give us 
life in abundance. That does not talk to the quantity of life, but it refers to the quality of life. He came to give us the best life. Not many years in life, but the best life. You can live for 40 years, but you can live the best life if you are in Christ. The best life is the life in Christ. The worst life is the life outside Christ. He came so he may have life in abundance that talks to the quality of life and never to the quantity of life. Jesus never came to quantify our lives, but Jesus came to give us a life of quality. That's why it doesn't matter how, you, how long you lived. It matters how well you lived. That's the first coming of Jesus. I said it's, it's categorized in three. Two, Jesus is going to come in rapture. He's going to come through rapture. The first time Jesus came, he was from heaven through a human being. When Jesus went back to heaven, he never went back through a human being. He may have come through a human being, but he never went back through a human being. In Gelosi Zambega, Bambega Ujwesa Kupuga Yezuluin. She was raptured Bambega. In Gelosi Zati, Matwata Sekali, Lord Jesu Nimbonayo, Ngenzela Pagame Ngayo, Ngenzela Yobuya Ngayo. Wahab, where is that young moon to Waham by Jung Kulungu? Mabagar Kumun to Sebuntunung Hambaranjalu, unless there's some godliness in them. So, where is that? Jung is singers of Peel, Waham and Jung and Goos, and Mobile Tuna, and Mobile Sono, and Mobile Yam. Why is real? To intercede for us. Jesus is not resting with God as we speak. Jesus, ever since he left on earth, he went to heaven and is interceding for you and I every day. That is why the grace of God is ever sufficient for us. That is why you can fall seven times, but you can rise again still. Because somebody is interceding for you. That is why you can make mistakes, many mistakes, but God can cause you to rise again. Because Jesus is interceding for you. Every time I say, 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 He always presents the blood. Madi Akonyan. So he is now coming in rapture or through rapture. So, Ek Aleni, because of keeping Taulo, as a part of the bright price, jongo mkonya na wetu. Ku rapture, uza uzo tatu makoti waki. Ngoba awazu lobo lu makoti unga samtati. So nwe rapture uchu yesu yabu ya manji, uzo tata ogungo waki. Agezo tata wongu mundu, uzo tata ogungo waki. That's rapture. But let rapture learn. This is what the Bible says about it. Matthew 24, 36. You can you find the screen if you can? Let's go. One, two, three, go. But of that day, an hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. No one knows when rapture is going to take place. But everyone should know. The immediacy of the activity. Everyone should know the imminency of rapture. Everyone should know Jesus is coming back quickly, quickly, underline quickly, quickly. We don't know when, but quickly. There's a song that says, Soon and very soon, we're gonna, soon and very soon is coming. Soon and very soon. 
His coming is imminent. Why am I saying that? Everything leading up to rapture, everything, everything, everything has happened. Everything leading up to rapture, when you follow the prophetic calendar of God, everything leading up to rapture has happened. What's left to happen is rapture. All the signs that should, that should be seen before rapture has already taken. That's, the, that's one thing a tusayo. That's one thing a tusayo. Yonke into meleenzeke before rapture. Se ay ay enzek se yenzekile. That's the problem. In other words, there's nothing left to happen for rapture to happen. Let me repeat. There is nothing left to happen for rapture to happen. There is nothing left to happen to give way to rapture. Hence, I'm saying it's imminent. When I was in fasting in January, God spoke to me. He said to me, Kunga Peru 2020, Unga Jesu. That was a clear instruction. So, Umebuyu Jesu Manj, he comes through rapture. I'm going to explain later a lot of things about that. I was just laying the foundation just like last week. And then Umo Jesu Zobuya, the third, the third Ubuya Ga Jesu was three, is his second coming. Between the first coming and the second coming, there's a rapture. Between the first coming and the second coming, there's the rapture. Between the first coming and the second coming, there's the rapture. Between the first coming and the second coming, there's the rapture. Which is Agabui was three, Uyobuya was two. Before Abuya was two, Konubuyo Azolbuya, Agabuya Lumitabu, Uye Liban, the rapture. Nkazi the last week, Oguti rapture in. Again, cause a footy man. If I believe in rapture, is a blessed hope of the church. Itemba elibusi segile lebanda. That's according to the book of Titus two thirteen. Rapture is the blessed hope of the church. Church, we don't have to worry. Oguti is second coming in ini. Ngoba is second coming in volvanati. Nzo kaza later. We don't have to know who the second coming in in, but the second coming in Volvanat, I need to be on our path to go to. So, Kaza later. As bigger less it in deal, rapture. Which is manji, umebuya, uyobuye latina, agabuyanga ugyo pupisum taba. As yagele leo so ibona later, ubuye latina. Upaula utis fiso sami, uguting in prison the gunkulunguru, ni ban den gena sikri. That's the mandate of every man of God. Nyon prison ta ganjan gunkulunguru, melengen zisho uguting yan prepara. Ol tata, we al tata, ong al tata, gal tata, ang zange ni lab, but I've done my part. No man atua, this is the last message I preach on earth, I'll be very excited. Nyaz uguting wenzel umsebe zwam. Now, in rapture, in parallel, apa engwa dini First Thessalonians chapter four, verse sixteen and seventeen. We are going to read that scripture. We are going to read that scripture. And if it's on the screen, and if you can read with me, please read one, two, three. How will rapture happen? Read. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven. Stop right there. Where is Jesus now? Where is Jesus now? The Bible says the Lord himself will descend. When Jesus left the earth in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus ascended. He ascended to heaven. He's going to descend from heaven. The Lord himself, read, he will descend from, let's go, with a cry. Again, with a, 
underline that with a he will not just descend quietly or silently he will descend with a cry somebody say cry Jesus will cry but I'll show you how he's gonna cry he will descend with a cry but this cry is a cry of command everybody say cry of command let's continue with the voice of an archangel underline voice of an archangel and with the sound of the trumpet of God underline sound of the trumpet of God threefold Jesus will descend with a cry of command it was a cry of command it was a cry of command that word or that phrase cry of command refers to a military calling of troops by the commander of the army it is not a cry of hopelessness it is not a cry of sadness and defeat but it is a cry that refers to a military command to the troop by the commander-in-chief So that shout is a military shout. And God said to me, the symbol of rapture and the symbol or symbolism of this is the book of, of Ezekiel 37. The Bible says God spoke to prophet Ezekiel and it says, stand in the midst of the veil of dry bones. And prophet Ezekiel stood in the midst and he began to make a cry of command in the spirit. And he commanded the spirits of the dead and the slain to come from the east, from the west, from the south, from the north. And the Bible says, as he cried that command, the bones came together. That was a cry of a commander in chief. And the Bible says, not human beings stood up, but a great army stood up from the dry bones. Army came out from the dry bones valley. So when Jesus will be standing in the clouds, and when he makes a cry of command, it will be like a commander-in-chief issuing marching orders to the body of believers. So Jesus will make a command, but the archangel, the archangel will make a sound with a voice. Not angels. An archangel is a chief angel. Is an angel that is above all other angels. That command got you will be followed when Jesus makes a command. Every commanded soldier of the cross will listen to the command and respond. Law already, Uzzah is the command and respond. But that command will be followed by a voice of an archangel. For the first time, you'll hear a voice, not of an angel, but a voice of archangel. Listen to people in the Bible who will hear the voice of, a, of an angel. It's like many waters. But that they are going to hear the voice of an arch, a chief angel. And then there shall be the sound of trumpets. That will be the responsibility of angels sounding the trumpets. This cry of command, Yagajis, it is one of the three most important cries Jesus has ever cried and never to cry again. The first meaningful cry that Jesus cried was in the book of John chapter 11. When Jesus went to the grave of Lazarus, Jesus stood before the grave and Jesus cried, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible says, the dead man came alive. That was a cry of a commander-in-chief. If Jesus did not call the name of Lazarus, the entire grave was going to rise. But Jesus had to be clear. I'm calling only Lazarus. When rapture happens, only the church 
will hear the cry of command and only the church will respond. Nobody will hear but the church. That's why God for us that was a pale. God just want to rise up. Because that cry of command, no one can ignore. But it was directed to Lazarus. This one is going to be directed to the church. Since what is one Not la. But in our spirit. Also, to the work and get this way. Uman echo connected to the network. Who prepare a tina? We must always remain ready and remain connected so we may not lose the network. So the first meaningful cry, Jesus' cry, a cry of command, was when he stood right there. Lazarus, come forth. The Bible says, Oboshiwe, Wapuma, Watim that was the greatest authority of a commander-in-chief. The second cry that Jesus cried was when he was on the cross. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthane. Kulungulwami, kulungulamungshielanina. The Bible says, after that cry, according to Matthew 25, verse 46, he cried that cry on the cross. And the Bible says in verse 52, amatuna wavulek. There was not a cry of sadness. There was not a cry of the cross. There was not a cry of pain. There was not a cry of frustration. There was the cry of command. Read the Bible. The last command, cry of command, according to first. Thessalonians 4, 16 to 17. A year rapture. That's the last cry. He will never cry again. Le azo yenza manji. Angega yenza yetwa. Kulazaros wa yenza yetwa. Spambanuen wa yenza yetwa. I won ulazaro. Wa puma etunen. I won ujesu. Voice a cry of command. Le'ezai voice is going to be a cry of command, the voice of an archangel, then the sound of angelic trumpets. Jesus will never ever command us again. Because last is a forever with Jesus. Go by in a natural thing. Who wants in Tando Yake? I have a conist thing also with us chelly in. Go by in natural thing. Who wants in Toya? In rapture, you want the Ganjan. Jesus. As the Bible says, it's going to stand in the clouds. He will be carried by a cloud, but it's going to stand in the air, carried by a cloud. Lento yinto so wenzaga any time soon. Gonke ogus komba wutikmele wenzaga kala before yenzaga wenzaga gonke. Agukoksebe. Papamani bazaluan. We must be like the sons of Issachar, understand the times and seasons. Can you tell us something? Good thing, shock. Any other pin to shock? Goodness, in present, they are manji. Many things are mangazi. They are the signs of the end times. One, according to the book of Timothy, the Bible says, in the last days, people will be lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. People will be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Because 
People will prioritize things over God. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 24, when Jesus talked about the end times, the Bible says, in this that talks about backsliding. COVID came and tell me what you are sensing. I shift like my position. Don't be part of the statistics. Don't say Period. Uchesu will stand in the air carried by the clouds. That's what the Bible says in First Thessalonians 4, 16, 17. And Jesus, when he does that, the dead believers will rise first to meet the Lord in the air. The dead believers. Uchesu, ubuyeli bandu. Abazalwane engbashoni ili ngbabiza ngugutiba graduatele. Jesus is coming from the, for the graduated believers and the living believers. That's why you buy waste. He waste. He waste. He waste. Mina it destiny yami ne eternity yami secured. I'm going to show I'm getting so na. Msugi lebo environment ema temptation. Yay yay. Ukufa umzara ne kunono kunono. That's why the Bible says in the book of Psalms one sixteen verse fifteen, gui kuku precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saint. Mkala kuti unga warika kulu makishonu mtu o mtu anaka mkulu mkulu. Gubale kwenza kakutu ya buya bekazo buya tinkala kutu zikalele wena na bantu anabako. Because we are still going to struggle sin. Mina have graduated. Fish. Utu paula. Ugu pila kimi kungu krestu. Ugu ufa kuyi nzuzo. Umasifa tina siya zuza. Nkalas nga kalela an masifa ne? Ase plif. Because law fire un gone den gu na hawe. When a mosa pila, maye guwe. Law filo un zalwane, praise God. Oh, gone too soon, forget about that. Leave me alone. Law of feel, stop going too soon. Going too soon. Gone too soon, fucking yembes. No one does that one alone. It destiny I can say is secured. I can say we call this and now. I can say when they mistaken now. So the dead will rise first to respond to this cry of command. Why the dead first? But the privilege, no baba hamba kala gunat. So goodness and those the ones that are a gibu before then they get a sapila. Mang abe sapila is cut less. Bio bio niggas are the privilege moba basu swim sabeni earlier than us. Basic papi tina suba so bonabayo san to lela tina su zenva wabo. Are you with me, family? And then we shall the Bible says we shall all be changed. I'm going to explain from next week what that means. Because in the state in which we are, when we meet the Lord in the air, we don't have what it takes to can be in his presence in our current state. We are going to be changed. But I'm going to explain how. But now I'm telling you why. Let me give you an example. When you see people, when we worship, when you see them crying, 
some they fall is because they can't in their own natural body contain the presence of God. How much more must some beggar soldiers? Angege long zimba ube ready. Angege long zimba ube right ube uchesu. So melu shinchwe. So you are not going to meet the Lord the way you are. No. Some of the people that are Christians, when they die, some, when they taste death and come back, not some, all of them, all of them, they say, I wish, I wish ngabang buyanga. They say the same thing. I wish 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 I these scriptures, they show us the nature of rapture. The nature of rapture. There's something I want you to learn from these scriptures. It's quite a number of them. I'm going to give them to you. We're going to go through them together. Are we ready? The first scripture is John 14, verse 1 to 3. You can write them down, but look at your screen if you can. John 14, verse 1 to 3. Aksi verse lo mnuabo, lady. Aha, master. Aksi verse lo mnuabo. Lele aksi verse lo mwa. John 14, verse 1, 2, 3. These are the words of our master Jesus Christ. If you can read, read with me. 1, 2, 3, let's read. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Ngesi zuliti, inti ziyo zenu, mazi nga katazeg, nga pinda fut. Aksi verse lo mwa bo lady. Then I promise. Let's go. First, verse 1, verse 1. I can't hear you. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Pay attention to verse 2. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. What did Jesus say? I am going to do what? To prepare a, a place for who? Before I'm Tata when the show, Uhutio Lung is in Dawo. Labazabane honeymoon corner. Am I right? Every time when I counsel people who are about to get married, the first question I would normally ask the men, Nyosalapi Nalumtonomuntu. So the responsibility of the groom, the first responsibility of the groom is that he must go and prepare a place for the bride. So, oh Jesus, this was part of his farewell speech. I am going to prepare a place for... This is when preparation meets preparation. If Jesus is going to prepare a place for us, we need to prepare to meet him. As the groom prepares a place, the bride must prepare himself or herself for the place prepared by the groom. Verse 3 is very critical. Please read it. 1, 2, 3, read. And if I go and prepare a place for you, did you get that? What will happen? Stop right there. I'm preparing the place, not only that, but I will come again and take you to myself. That will happen in a rapture. That's why there's rapture to fulfill this promise. Stay there. 
to fulfill this promise. I want you to understand how God is. When God makes a promise, he never turns back on it. I was driving last month from Jobek to Middleburg. When I was driving, I saw something and I became emotional because I understand better than most people who see that thing and, 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 and it will have no difference. As I was driving, I saw the rainbow. In Zulu, when I saw the rainbow, I cried because not because not because not because of the rainbow, but I cried because I know what the rainbow meant. The first time God gave the rainbow, he spoke to Noah. He said to Noah, uh, I will never again. That's when God saw the dead bodies on earth after he killed people with the rain. After he killed people in Mozambique, God spoke to Noah and God says, I will never again kill my people with the flood. I will never again. And God further said to Noah, when you see the rainbow in the sky, that will be the sign of the covenant. When you see the rainbow, that will be the sign of the covenant. It will reinforce my promise. Every time you see the rainbow, remember this promise. I will never again kill people using the flood. So when I saw that rainbow, I knew that Noah is long dead, but the promise lives forever. When God makes a promise, it is always forever. It is not temporary. Noah is gone, but the promises remain forever because God's promises are forever. When I saw that rainbow, I was not there. But I read the scripture. So when I saw that rainbow, then I understood that when God makes a promise, he keeps it. When he makes a promise, he keeps it. Because he's God. So this is the promise that God gave. He says, I'm going to come back to get you to myself. No matter what you're going through on earth, but God says, I'm going to come back and get you to myself. When he says that, it's going to happen and no one is going to stop it. No devil is going to challenge it. When God makes a promise, that promise comes to pass. I don't care what you're going through, but the promises of God are yes. The promises of God are amen. The promises of God are eternal. Do not worry. The promises of God Yes, and they are forever. Amen. So when God makes a promise, we know what Dalawafa, but the promise, Abaye Bantu Nababoni Rainbow, because the two are Rainbow Nation, Rainbow Nation. They don't even know the origin of Rainbow. They don't even know what informs the Rainbow. Rainbow was never part of the creation, but Rainbow is a sign of the covenant. There will never be a time when God kills the whole world with the flood. Never. He swore and made a vow. People make promises and break them every day. You, you understand the power of a promise. Rather not make it if you make it to break it. You can't do that because the promise is covenant. That is why marriage is built on a promise. Marriage is built on a covenant. You know why? Because the coming of Jesus is like marriage. That is why marriage is the number one target of Satan. Marriage is attacked by Satan every day. Because marriage reminds Satan of Jesus' coming for his bride. Without marriage, there is no church. Without marriage, there is no family. Without marriage, there is no community. Without marriage, there is no society. Marriage is the number one target of Satan. Because marriage in Kumbuza Buyaga Jesu. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yes. Ah.
So I will come again and receive you to myself. And no Because into a promise like Melayans. Mark 13. I'm about to finish. Mark 13. Verse 32. We are looking at the nature of rapture. If you can, please read with me from the screen. Let's go. One, two, three. Go. Part of that day, an hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven. Nor the Son, but only the Father. Even Jesus Christ does not know when the rapture will take place. Angels does not know. It's the exclusive knowledge of God the Father. That's how sacred rapture is. It's a fatherly affair. Verse 33. Take heed. Come on. Watch and pray. For you do not know when the time is. You can pray, you'll never know. There is no one that can receive the revelation of rapture. It's not supposed to. Exclusive knowledge of God. Verse 34. How is rapture like? Read with me. Go. It is like a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each his work and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Verse 35. Watch, therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming. In the evening, at midnight, at the crowning of the rooster, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. That's the nature of rapture. God says the only thing I want you to do, watch. That word means stay ready, remain ready, stay prepared, remain prepared. How do I ensure I'm prepared? Every day, confess your sins. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Because there are sins of commission and there are sins of omission. Sins of commission are things you do that are wrong. Sins of omission are things that you, have, you are supposed to do and you have not done. You have omitted them. Confess every day. The Bible says, Abanetemba guye, bayastambulula mtsuguzonke. Confess your sins every day. Pray every day. Because we are perfected every day. We sin by our thought. We sin by, 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 by our heart. We sin by our speech. We sin in so many ways. Why? Because we are in a sinful environment. We are not yet in heaven. We are tempted every day. Confess your sins every day. Every day, confess your sins. I'm begging you, confess your sins. When you confess your sin, you get cleansed and you move on. Confess your sin. I'm not talking about the sins you do deliberately. You'll be judged for that. Repent and do right before God. But every time you fall, get back up. Fall, get back up. It's okay. Get back up all the time. That's how you remain prepared. You don't remain prepared by being perfect. No one can be. No one. Only those that are dead and are believers are now perfect. Because they're like angels. But you cannot be an angel in this, in this earth. Never. There's too much sin. There's too much corruption on earth. You cannot be an angel yet. You need to rely on God's perfecting power on a daily basis. Mm. 
Matthew 25, 13. If you can, please read with me. I'm closing. Matthew 24, 25, verse 13. Let's read. One, two, three. Read. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Matthew 24, 27. Matthew 24, 27. Let's look at the nature of the rapture. Read with me. One, two, three. Read. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Like a what? Like a what? Who has ever timed a lightning? Who can ever say the lightning occurred in this time and it lasted for such and such a time? Who can do that? Because the lightning, when it comes, it comes and it's gone. That is how rapture will happen. Then doing a fundisa, you will not just sit there and watch and say, No, 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 no. It will happen in a lightning form. Lightning. Another version says, no pass him away. So, in a twinkling of an eye, it rapture signs again. It's going to be so quick. That's why the word rapture means to snatch. When somebody snatches you, they are not picking you up. They are not fetching you. Jesus is not coming to fetch us. He's coming to snatch us away. That's a sudden take. Sudden take. Sudden take. I'm going to show you next week what the world will see, but not here. I'm going to show you what the world will see, but not here. And what we are going to hear, but not see. I'm going to go deeper next week. So, jenge lightning, yobanja, that's the nature of rapture. Jenge lightning. That's why lightning, it always finds us off guard. Even those who know that, must, that they must not be under the tree, they are in it under the tree sometimes. Not because they don't know, but because they were not aware lightning was coming. So, we're not going to be aware. But there's something I like about God. Ooh. The Bible says in 1 John 3, it says, what manner of love is this? Yo, one thing I like about God is in the book of, of Amos 3.7, where the Bible says, God never does anything unless he makes it known to his prophets and his servants. Ungulugul again ziluto until as they say about prophet back in the Take my talking and my ministry for granted. You'll be in trouble. Because God uses people like this as mouthpiece for you. When Zala go tikin abi kona ozo sala abe ne excuse you go ti bengas. The Bible says amazwi. Some of the things that will judge us is not God. But we're going to be judged by the words we heard and undermined. The words we heard and ignored. Look at 1 Thessalonians 5.2. 1 Thessalonians 5.2. If it's up there, say yes, Lord. If it's up there, say yes, Lord. Let's read. One, two, three, go. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a... The day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Let me ask a question, then I pray. Who of us know exactly what time the thief will come? No one knows. If we knew when the thief will come, none of us will be robbed. True? So the Bible says he will come like what? Like what? 
Do you know that this applies to everyone, including those who have heard about this coming? Even to you, he's going to come like a thief. To you, on Lalele Manj, all these who are he's going to come like a thief even to you, even to me. I know his coming is imminent, I know, but he's going to come at a time I don't expect. At a time you don't expect. Look at Matthew 24, verse 44. Just ignore verse 43. Read verse 44. Is it there? Matthew 24, 44. Is it there? These are the words of Jesus. Is it there? Let's read. One, two, three. Read. Therefore, you also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming. That's the nature of rapture. In Jalo. You know what that means? You know what that means? Who's those? Who my plans are serious? Who's those? Who are long selling shadow? What was him shabby? I figured out where to store it. Who's those? Who says a business vision? Yeah, go on niggas or we. We are pale on a disturber in vision. Who's those who are busy with the degree? Who final year? But next week you are graduate. Who are selling as a sugu, Ubala Malang, Ganti, Awazi, Ugoti, now, Segako. At the time you do not expect. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. And the more figure of Mishat and Kumangao, law or mystery, and you will feel and go to mystery, and you will feel a next. Who's about useless? No Musa Zulini, Saka Finger Lomlo, Lolo Lom Chitalo, Octemisile, and you get the corner to this Maria Zuches, who ascends the minute Saturday next week, and you get the corner next, next, next. No, next. Bishop Putesnashat, Ang Shong and Jang Suge, Temina, he will not respect your program. Come, worship team, God bless you. Same thing. Come on, come on, come on, quick. I want every eye closed as we prepare to pray. I want us to treat this moment as a very special moment. Part of preparation is to make sure you are right with God. Never in these days, never, never, never abuse time. This may be your last. It may be my last. None of us know. But you must make sure that you are right with God. We must just make sure we are right with God. So I want to give us an opportunity today. I cannot leave here until I give someone an opportunity and open the door of grace. Grace is sufficient. 
The arms of Jesus are wide open on the cross. The hands are wide open, ready to receive any. I'm standing at the door knocking. Anyone who hears my voice and respond to my knock, I'll come, stay in with them, eat with them, enjoy life with them. If you are not right with God, I want to give someone an opportunity to make things right with God. The men of God, I hear the word. I think, I don't think I'm okay with God. I want to make things right. Please pray with me. I want you to stand on your feet. We're just going to sing once. Those who say, I want to make things right with God. I want to rededicate, recommit my life to Jesus Christ. So I can live for him. You love me. Men of God, lead me. I want to live. So Take a step and come forward so I can lead you to Jesus Christ afresh. I want you to take a step and come forward so I can lead you to Jesus Christ afresh. So I can help you recommit, reconnect, and rededicate. Just sing one more time. I thank you for your word, a momentous word, a timeless word, the word of grace, a prophetic caution. Lord, we thank you for helping us prepare ourselves as your body and as your people. Your word will never go out and come back void. Your word will never return back to you, not having accomplished the mission for which it was sent to accomplish. And Lord, I thank you that it was sent and it was assigned. And Father, I've executed the mandate. I've executed the assignment by your grace. And Lord, I thank you that you have heard your word. And in Mongotilio Kubeka, Lenzum Sebins in Brunese. Utum Tabelo, your word is working mightily in me. May this word continue to work mightily in our hearts, mightily in our lives, and continue the work of divine preparation for us to meet our soon coming King. We give honor, praise, and glory. 
We thank you and we are so grateful, O oh God, for your will. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you.